But we always need to humble ourselves and say, is that about me? I need to keep your eyes on God. Because I, I, I make... I, oh, oh, you know that I... But God does not want us to compromise Amen. on his word Amen. for young people and elders. The word has not changed from the youngest to the eldest. We must hold true to the living word of God. It's not a dead word. It's a living word. It's a living word that lives inside of us. But we have to understand the word in its right context so that we can walk that thing out. So that we can live the life that is pleasing in his sight. So when we get confronted with the things of this world, we can stand firm. This message is not for this church building. Because this issue did not happen in the church. When you get confronted, let's be honest, most of the time, 90% of the time, you're not going to be confronted in BBCC. You may be confronted about those stupid stuff. Stuff that we, that we created and stuff that we like. And we get confused with what we like and what we like to do and how long we've been doing it with scripture. Go ahead, go ahead. But it's going to be outside of the word. It's going to be the second you walk up into the pool. It's going to be the second you go to the store where you will be confronted as young people, not even young people, let me just say everybody, we spend probably the least amount of time in this church building. So if we try to play safe and do what's right only in here, we do it wrong most of the time. Go ahead. Go ahead. We have to take this word with us and carry it and not compromise the word when we're in job meetings, well. when we're dealing with parents. Maybe there's a hot subject and, and, and maybe it's about Black Lives Matter or maybe it's this or, or maybe it's that or maybe it's about Trump or whatever it is. We have to not confuse our feelings with what the Bible says. We have to stand firm on the word of God and not be willing to compromise. Because that's the devil's, I believe, one of the devil's strongest tools. What they used to say, if I can get a toehold, then I can get a foothold. If I can just get in there just a, a little bit, if I can get you to believe, you don't, you're not going to go to hell if you do that. If I can get you to believe, once saved, always saved. If I can get you to believe that, well, as long as you're a good person and you give money to the church, you're going to go to heaven. The devil is a liar and all of his imps. If you do not give your life to Christ, you will go to hell. It's tight, but it's right. We have to not compromise on the word of God. Unwavering worship. I know when we walked into it, we're thinking about another way of how we worship God here. But worship, as I said the first time, is not done only here. You worship him in spirit and in truth. Spirit and truth outside of here. You can have it in here, but you got to have it out. You have to have his spirit. You have to have his presence. You have to have his Holy Ghost that will be a comfort and be a, a compass in your life. And that compass steers your feet and that compass bridles your tongue. Go ahead. Sometimes that compass shuts up your ears. And sometimes it opens it for truth. Y'all not, not shouting. It's, it's important that we realize that worship matters. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a feminine thing. It's not a masculine thing. But it's a, a God-serving Christian thing. And that's why we can worship him how we want to. Yeah. Yeah. There's still an order, but and I'm, I'm being kind of facetious, but uh, we can worship him. We don't have to do it the same way. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Make it a little bit clearer. We don't have to do it the same way. You don't have to sing like Minister Walters. And you don't have to pray like uh -huh. Deacon Dotson, but you got to pray. Uh -huh. yeah. You got to talk to him. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. You don't have to have on black and white or red and yellow, but... You know, you got to get yourself prepared. You got to have your mind ready and stay on Jesus. You got to spend a little, there's some stuff you got to do. And the old saints would say that there'll be some signs. There'll be some signs. You can't, you can't have no signs if you ain't spent no time with them. Our, ch our children reflect us a lot of times because we spent a lot of time on them, in them, teaching them a certain thing. Not because they just look like us. 
But if you, I'm just gonna use brother uh, Nazir, who's not here, so I use him. You, you can tell who his mama and daddy is. Yeah. 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 And not just because he looks like him, because he talk like him. Yeah. And you can tell what they instill in them. Yes. You can tell what's going on. Yes. And if we instill the word of God in the youth, into you guys at a young age, yes. Yes. they may go a little far, but they won't depart. They may have some troubles and trials and tribulation, but mother can say, hold on just a little while longer. Things will work out. You're going to be tested, but you can make it through the fire. I don't even want to go to the next part because I need to deal with the fire, but I just need to stay here about not compromising. You have to know the word of God so you know you're not compromising. On, on legal documents, they tell you to read the fine print. How many times have we signed something and then we went to cash hmm. in on it and find out it ain't no good to the 15th? Hmm. We ain't ready. Hmm. Hmm. You signed it. You show up. But have you read it? You show up. But are you reading it? So when you hear, if I was saying something crazy to y'all, some of y'all should be looking at me like, you know that ain't the word. Hmm. But if you don't know the word, and if I was talking crazy, y'all be walking out with craziness all on your mind. I'm saying that because it's not about me. It's about you getting that relationship with Christ, and you know without a shadow of a doubt that this is what God said. And I'm going to hold on to it. Brother Smith just reminded me of what God said. Yeah. Brother Smith reminded me of what God said he's going to do in my life. He yeah. reminded me, so when, yeah. I, when that trial comes, I'm not thinking about Brother Smith. I'm thinking about what the Word of God said. Yeah. The word of God says, greater is he that is in me than, than he that is in the word. The word of God says, uh, uh, if, we live, if we, we live for the Lord, then we die with the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what the word of God says. The word of God says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who has loved us. Hallelujah. The word says, your dear children, your, we have overcome them. He that, is, he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. First John 4 and 4. You'll be able to pull on the word of God. Yeah. And not just pull on the sermon on the third Sunday. Oh, go ahead. Because that's not going to do nothing for you. Yeah. Go ahead. You can call my name all you want, it ain't going to do nothing for you. And I'm not saying that out of arrogance. I'm saying that out of humility that we need to know what the word of God is saying for our lives, in our lives, to live our lives. That's right. That's right. We're ready to go. The doors of the church are open. But I'm going to read this scripture to you as we stand to our feet. Joshua 24 and 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the god of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Is there one 